gruesome. Very gruesome. Oh, sorry. I thought those were hanging bodies for a second. Pig's carcasses. Gotcha. Singing steel. Okay, this is definitely the horror elements of this. They're not getting that 3,000 back. I take payment after the job is done. And for a third of the price, an apology. From my guild to yours. Hmm. That's honorable. Very honorable of him. You know nothing. Of my pain. I won't say anything. What? Is it a vampire? You can put down your sword. I'm not here to hurt you. Ooh, a witch. Words. Triss Marigold. Oh, Triss. I serve King Foltest. So he makes a show of kicking me out. And I don't want you to kill the beast. Oh, uh, is that the same person from before? What the? You two clearly weren't acquainted. Oh. He's going to do his job, and you're going to like it. Well, never return. So he's effectively banished himself. This is a first. Usually, it's like usually he'd be saying something along the lines of "fight it, destroy it, so then leave and then return." Now he's like, "No, nope, I'll take care of myself." Organization. Don't tell me. Is this the brother, the brotherhood of sorcerers? Starve to death. So are they gonna... They're probably gonna catch on that Strogor has a spy in them with them. They just had it too early, I think. That's a cool shot. <laughs> I told you not to go to the West Wing! A girl's bed. Again, we're kind of exploring a lot of kinks this episode. I smelled. Oh, dude. Mm. Oh, so how does he fit in this? <clears throat> test had no he loved her. You're just angry because you lost your chance to be beautiful. Oh, stepped in that lemon. I want to be powerful. Seen and adored with everyone watching. Oh. This is what I'm owed. No amount of power or beauty will ever make you feel worthy of either. This is going to be interesting. We're playing this. It's playing this like we're playing, like, screw it. We're going to go in. For all it brightens, love casts long shadows. I envy you. To live. It's called and will. Fall in love. It's called ability to change and choose. To deny your baser instincts. That is to be human. To move beyond them. For the greater good. For what he did. What he did to you, baby. Explain Maybe what he did to the town, but... Carry me out, I order you. Order him. Tell me how to lift the curse. You have no authority over him. <sighs> Man, the sound design on her is really good. It was his fault. Oh, I get it now. I loved your mother. <laughs> Jesus! Holy crap! Good God! Is there any saving her? Yeah. 
looks like she's in, in constant pain. It's gonna take, it's gonna take more than that. Mutilation the female. Seems to be a consistent theme across these two. Oh! She has a will greater than anyone else. No escape. You're locked in here with him. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Silver Knuckles. Everyone's screaming. feel like it but I mean I, th I think she really felt it come on just this once let him save one princess or is Siri going to be the only one he ever saves jeez she was reborn she's just a fetus What? Jesus. Christ. She's wild. She's far from safe just yet. Come on, Tris, get in there. Save him. <laughs> it's gonna be like she's all dead when she just walks in. And oh my goodness, she's stunning. Your excellence, she's good. Oh, she's the niece. Anyone else would have killed the princess. You chose not to. Live and learn. I'll take my coin now. <laughs> Poor Roach. Who's Renfrey? That was the only name you uttered princess. over and over in your sleep. <laughs> my coin. So that's all life is to you? Monsters and money. Don't say it's not about life. Not about life. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> she is there. Good, good balance this episode. I think we didn't get too much time with her. It's good to get Jennifer and Geralt. Maybe uh, Geralt and her and, and Siri, and then uh, another Jennifer and Siri. Look, Dara, get back in there. Hide. Siri. Right. 
let's get started on this. So, yeah, beginning, beginning off, starting off the episode, I, th I didn't find it as engaging. I mean, it certainly had the horror element to it. Certainly, it played into the, the, the much the monster hunting notions that, when you think about it, monster hunting, that, that should make for a great sort of horror series. Not just like a good fantasy series, like the, the fact, the notion of the monster, the build up of terror when down the sequences. I was actually caught off guard uh, for when that, when I can't even remember what, what, what creature was called, but the way she was sneaking around the room and then she can, and she just pops her head, head like into the side of the frame and it's like, blah, I was like, whoa. And then there was, it was a horrific display. Like seeing it, it was gruesome. Uh, there's a lot of body horror to this and throughout the entire episode. I mean, that's opening sequence where he's tucking his hand underneath the carcass of his dead, his dead ally. The uh, the evisceration of that of that mage who was who was tied up as bait. Poor uh, Yennefer who was who was mutilated in order to achieve a different form, and. The, the princess herself, who was who was malformed by dark magic, into this this this, this disgusting hybrid of a fully grown and a fetus. It's a, it's an excellent execution of body horror. The, uh, these these concepts of you you normally assume there's some sort of disconnect between yourself and what's seen on what's seen in fiction that what is seen there is a gruesome display of a human being human being being torn apart but then it sort of crosses that the shows like these that really cross the boundary of it just being like just being blood spurting everywhere and limbs being hacked off now you suddenly start realizing yeah that's that's an entire being being dismembered that's an, that's a human being destroyed that's a part of me that I can recognize. My organs can be spilled out. My blood can be can be spilled, and especially I like I liked how personable the monster was. Throughout this entire so far this series, uh, Gerald has been constantly bringing up the notion of the princess, the lost princess, the one who died, and the fact that he had to he had to kill kill her himself, or she had to let he had to let her die. And that's a personal failure on his part. So all these episodes where he's dealing with with some uh, fallen form of, of princess, it's a kind of a way of him trying to reclaim that sense of honor from when, from whatever they lost. He lost the ability that that honor of saying I saved that person, that princess, and this is his way of finding atonement for that. That's. And it's, brought into, and it's brought into the form of a monster. It's the very thing he hunts that he has to take another form of, of, a, of approach to the monster. First we saw him kill the monster. Then we see in this, the last episode we saw him negotiate with the monster. This episode he had to heal the monster. Monsters bring into being the unknown. None of which is possible, but yet they happen. Julia Kristeva. And it's it crosses that sort of boundary between the monsters and the body what is not and what what is human organic and what is alive and what is an object look at the object that is the monster's body but we fear what's contained beneath it the, the possibility of a human being and it's interesting how it's how I especially love near the end how we tie together those element the elements of the body of body horror between Yennefer and the, the princess. The fact that when she was, when they were both malformed and they were both going through a struggle, both were trying to achieve, in a sense, a liberation from what, from others, others, but the men around them have actually done. I mean, Yennefer, she transcends the traditional notion of being just a vessel for male progeny, male progeny, for being the, just a sexual object something to be owned, something to be moulded. And in a way she gives up the, the, that notion of it. 
she gives up her her potential to be uh, be uh, an archetype of, of women at the time that they were all sort of just vessels objects and she does that by sort of using body horror to, by, by her own hands by her own consent to say I want to do this and to give up the traditional notions of being of motherhood and birthing and and being just this object to be looked at and I want to use that that objectivity to become more powerful so by the conclusion of the episode, she actually is uh, able to influence others and get her way around and be and have her own say, say and becoming more powerful. Contrast with the with the monster, with the princess, wherein she's been she's been malformed by by fragile male ego. This one sorcerer, this one wizard, has demanded that he be the one to claim ownership the mother, the queen, the sister, and in, and in retaliation when he doesn't get his way, he, he deforms, the do deforms the baby, the daughter, and as such she suffers for his sin. Thankfully when, with Gerald's arrival it's a case of liberating her from that, from that destruction. The fact that, when, that they both, both Yennefer and the princess at the same time are going through a rebirth while Gerald, and at the same time Gerald's going through rebirth, he saves the princess and is born in blood, spills blood and real at the same time the princess is is unfurling from a sort of fetal position, become a, become a human again, at the same time Yennefer is, un, is unfurling from blood to become a more powerful sorceress, at the same time Gerald awakens from a, from a dismal nightmare to realise he has saved a princess, but he's, he's almost there. It's the starting point of, of their further growth. All of them were connected, and I'm so glad it was just him, Gerald, and Yennefer's story. That sort of combined element of, of exploring their rebirth and growth. Not having to shove in uh, Siri, Princess Ciri's story or some other side quest, but it was just like a main quest for both these characters. I uh, suppose I should gush a little bit, a bit, a bit of fanboy gushing. That fight was brilliant. Not, not as good as the, I think, the first one with, with the street thugs. Mainly that was just a, case, a display of just power, just sheer, sheer momentum. He just mowed down all those thugs. And here there was a case of, you know, mixture of power play. You know, he was he had the upper hand, she had the upper hand. They were both kind of, both wrestling with one another. He had to resort to, you know, using magic as to shield and charms and potions, and he had to, and he had to really play dirty around with it and just try, pretty much, almost wrestle her. And it, and it, would, it just felt like a real dirty match, and it felt, it actually looked and felt dirty. And I think, I think that worked to its benefit. He, Gerald looked like he, he got hurt, and that whole, and it really was a, a, an episode of pain. Of just bloodshed, and hopefully, I'm th I'm hopeful that the next episode goes a bit further. Let's see how much further we can go with the world as a whole. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and comment down below. And if you'd like to see more content, please subscribe or click on the videos that appear on the screen here. And thanks again so much for watching. Happy Descent.